The end goal has been achieved, divers. We liberated those sick kids, and on top of that, we just went through a pretty epic last 24 hours. Now, not only did we get that Viper Commandos War Bond, but the largest and most significant patch the game has ever received also went live. There were so many changes to look over and try out, and well, now I've done most of that, and it's time to discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. Welcome to the channel, it's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and besides that dictionary of changes, we've also got an incoming news broadcast from Helldivers HQ, we need to check in on those kids, and Johan is back and making a pretty significant splash. Thank you so much for your awesome support. Remember to hit subscribe. It's free and it really helps out the channel. And while you're here, make sure to ring that notification bell to receive my latest upload alerts. And here comes the latest from our favorite democracy spreading adventure, Helldivers. <laughs> I love it when these war bonds drop because that means new armor sets in the superstore. Today we've got the medium PH-56 Jaguar body armor with peak physique, which increases melee damage by 50% and also improves our weapon handling. We've also got the sick looking PH-56 Jaguar helmet complete with beret and sniper targeting reticle. The CE-101 Guerrilla, Gorilla Helmet and the over-the-top, super beefy CE-101 Heavy Body Armor with Engineering Kit for Reduced Recoil and plus two stems along with two seconds extra stem duration. Zipping over to the galactic map and it's so good to finally see supply lines on the map itself, right? And this footage was actually recorded a couple of hours ago, so it's completely out of date. But we have now liberated Vernon Wells, and we have just a little under 24 hours to try to liberate Marfark. Now, that's going to be a monumental task, partially because of the time of day as it relates to available players, and also because it once again pushes us into another bot campaign, which can wear down many divers. Consulting the Helldivers Companion app, and we can now see that Vernon Wells has now been removed from that map. Also speaking of Marfark, a few minutes ago I saw the number of divers planet side at a shade over 6,000, and that number has grown significantly as we finished up over on Vernon Wells, and most of our Helldiver forces have shifted over to Marfark. Now since Marfark has a minus 2.5% modifier, and we have a shade under 24 hours to go, the only way we're going to pull this off and get those mines is to simply overwhelm the bots with sheer numbers. So if you've got the time today, drop in and knock out your three missions to contribute to that war effort. And finally, today's daily or personal order is to kill 20 Scout Striders, which are those two-legged walkers with the exposed driver and can be found in really any bot missions. Drop 20 of them and net your 15 medals, which you can use to pick up more items from the Viper Commandos War Bond. Are you loving, liking, or just generally indifferent about the new offerings in the War Bond? There seems to be a lot of comments coming in. Some players love it while others are not feeling it. And you know, I've now unlocked most of the important items outside of the cosmetics, which is really what this war bond is centered around, right? Anyways, for me, and this is just my two cents here based on my personal play style and preferences, but I would give the AR-23A Liberator Carbine a solid six, maybe a seven out of 10. The fire rate is crazy, and so is the spread and recoil, which I counter by switching it into burst fire mode, but it feels like a weapon caught between updates. The Lib Carbine screams tight urban environments, hip fire, run and gun, and there just isn't that kind of biome currently in the game. The SG-22 Bushwhacker is just sick, but very limited. Single fire versus chaff literally melts targets, and switching it over to fire all three barrels at once can obliterate stronger enemies like a bile spewer at the cost of just ripping through all your ammo. My only knock against the Bushwhacker is you then have to swap out your grenade pistol, which provides so much utility for a secondary weapon. But overall, the Bushwhacker earns a solid 8 from me. I mean, it's good at what it does, and the triple barrel stopping power is strong. I can't say the same for the combat knife. Oof, yeah. I mean, it looks cool, but the damage output is iffy, and the aim is way off between the reticle and where this thing strikes. 
The PH9 Predator and PH202 Twig Snapper armors are visually pretty sick to look out. I mean, it's sun's out, gun's out as the order of the day, right? But this new peak physique passive is just not doing it for most divers. Melee damage increases how hard we hit targets with our weapons, which was never very strong to begin with, and I personally didn't notice a difference in weapon movement while using these armors. The Experimental Infusion Booster seems to be the real prize with Viper Commandos, especially when you pair it with a stem suit, giving you six total stems. The speed boosts are significant. I mean, it greatly reduces your incoming damage. And with the medkit passive, you also get two seconds more stem duration. And if anyone on your squad has this unlocked right now, it's a must equip. Just when you thought it was safe during a mission when you didn't see a Shrieker Nest or Gunship Factory, well, now we have roaming patrols of these things. This is a major change that was snuck into the game as part of yesterday's patch, and overall, I'm digging it. Especially how it just showed up with no warning. We kept looking for the Shrieker Nest to complete that objective, and there were none, and then it dawned on us, so... Yeah, really cool implementation, and it adds just another element to our combat. Of course, yesterday we did get that mega patch, and overall, this was a strong set of changes. And I wanted to circle back around and touch on some of the highlights I was seeing during my post-patch sessions. Now, first off, sentries. Wow. Man, did they get some serious love. Now, outside of all the individual buffs and changes, the thing that really stuck out was how durable they now seem to be. They used to die so quickly, and now they can tank some incoming damage outside of rocket devs blasting them from range. The removal of the AA defense modifier was a long time coming, but it was great to see. And how about that Sea Launcher change to now allow us to use it after the mission timer has expired? I mean, that is clutch. Also, the planetary haze we've been seeing on every single planet during the daylight cycles does now seem to be tuned back a bit. And my eyes are thankful. The acid effect swap for hunters and bile in general also seems to be a much better implementation of that damaging effect. It's no longer an insta-kill scenario, and the hunters are still just as nasty, just as aggressive as before, but having that slow effect scaled back by 20% does make it a bit more survivable. I haven't experimented with Helldive solo missions since the patch, but so far, I'm hearing that the patrol spawns seem to have returned to the way it was a long time ago, which I guess is positive. Also, the spawn reduction of elites, especially on bug missions, is really noticeable. We only saw a handful of Bile Titans on our Helldive, and even the chargers were greatly thinned out. But in the spirit of fairness, I also wanted to include the not so good. And yesterday's patch is still being plagued by what was broken, including a massive range of instant crashes if you engage with the social menus, the menu system, or even if you happen to just tap the escape key. The ballistic shield crouch prone issue is irritating, especially for me, because I like to rock the shield. The plasma punisher shield combo kill glitch is back again and the spear although improved now has an issue where it can't target fabricators which is apparently going to be fixed in a future update and these last three items really stuck out at least to me and we're going to start off with the tenderizer and don't flame me these are just my opinions this goes far beyond how badly off kilter the sights are for this ar now of all the weapons that were adjusted in yesterday's patch i was most interested in getting my hands on the tendy and i've tried to like it but i just can't seem to connect with this weapon for the record yes it shreds lower level chaff and i love how it liquefies brood commanders but there's some sort of disconnect between yesterday's reduction of ammo in the mag, the reduction of mags, and the reload speeds that consistently gets me into trouble. Now, every other AR has about a one second difference between reload the weapon with ammo still left in the mag versus reloading it dry, but the tenderizer seems to be the exception to the rule. Dry reloads are slightly higher than average, coming in around 2.5 seconds, which is quite a bit, but that timer is only reduced by half a second for mags that still have rounds left in them, meaning you don't have to reprime the weapon and go through that animation sequence. 
By comparison, I can run the incendiary breaker dry and be back in the fight and dropping targets so much faster. And again, if anyone at Arrowhead ever sees this video, the tenderizer is close to being a great weapon, but it needs something more. More ammo, more mags, or that standard one second reduction for not having to reprime the weapon. At least for me. And again, that's just my opinion, so take it for what it's worth. Item number two has to be the new Peak Physique Armor Passive, which effectively does nothing. I mean, the new armor sets look strong, but that's about it. I've tried using this passive with and without the knife, I've experimented with weapon handling, and this could be down to user error, but I'm just not seeing any sort of difference here. And the final item here, item number three, focuses in on the elite spawns and specifically the automatons. Now the patch note said that Arrowhead slightly toned down the number of hulks that would spawn in, but when it comes to slightly, that feels like maybe a 0.5 to 1% difference. I mean, we hit Helldive yesterday and we were seeing hulks everywhere. Small points of interest, two hulks, patrols, a hulk, dropships, just hulks everywhere, which seemed odd because the bug version of these elite changes is so very noticeable. But, you know, overall, with that volume of changes, yesterday's game-changing patch was impressive and a good first step to getting the fun crammed back into Helldivers. It's all about them kids, divers, and Johan has put his money where his mouth is, or at least the studio's money. But in celebration of the Helldivers saving the kids on Vernon Wells, Arrowhead has made a real-life donation to the Save the Children Foundation in honor of our victory. I mean, what can I say about this that would do it justice? It's a great cause, and it's an incredible combo of the fictional diver victory with IRL. It's the little things that Helldivers does so much better than any other game, and something like this just adds to the mystique of PlayStation's biggest seller. Now, if we can just get those damn countries unblocked, that would be saying something. And we've got a little bit of breaking news on this as well. We just received a very special message from the children of Super Citizen Ants. It says, Dear Helldivers, thank you so much for saving us. They told us you made a lot of sacrifices, minds and lives, to help us. We'll always be grateful. Now we can grow up to become Helldivers too. With liberty, the very sick children of Super Citizen Ants. All right, this is a perfect time to press pause for today. I mean, it's Friday and we've got some anti-tank mines to go after, but make sure to leave me some feedback about that war bond and how you are vibing with yesterday's mega patch. Remember to hit subscribe and ring that notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. All my socials, including an open invite link to my Helldivers Discord community, can all be found down in the video description and pinned comments. Sometime overnight, the channel passed 232,000 subscribers, and I owe it all to you absolute legends from around the globe who have taken the plunge and hit subscribe. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.